Ayo Desumu lit up the Big Ten this year to solidify himself as one of the best guards in college basketball. But how far can he go in the NBA? This is Florence Ceiling. Let's break him down. Ayo Desumu was one of the most dominant players in the recent history of the Big Ten after staying at home to play for Illinois. Dasumu has been on NBA radar since his freshman season in the Prairie State and tested the waters last year, but it is only now that he is officially entering his name in the 2021 NBA Draft. At 6'5", 200 pounds with an impressive 6'9 wingspan, Dasumu has great measurements for a two-guard at the next level. However, he still has questions to answer about his shooting and driving game. When Ayo Desumu is at his best, he is a dynamic shooting guard who can handle the ball, create his own shot, and use his size to good advantage. Desumu averaged 20 points per game for Illinois in his junior season, a mark good enough for second in his conference. In particular, he loves this shot right here, the pull-up two around the elbows after stopping on a dime. Desumu's offensive profile featured a steady diet of these shots. 41% of his shots were two-point jumpers, showing that this is clearly his bread and butter right now. Part of me wonders how this will translate to the NBA since you do not see too many guards with such a high volume of shots from the mid-range. However, Desumu is clearly capable of getting his own shot off. Desumu operates off rangy dribbles using his wingspan and decent handle and then completely decelerates while the defender is on his heels to pull up into his jumper. Just 16% of his jumpers were assisted. Another important skill set that Desumu has as a two guard is his ability to move off the ball. Desumu was often paired with another ball handler at Illinois, mostly Andre Curbelo as the season went on, and I expect the same thing to happen at the next level. As I will get into later, Desumu can handle the ball, but he should not be considered a primary initiator at this point. The good thing is that he can leverage his shooting and athleticism to act as a cutter and get easy points for himself and his team. The sumo is active away from the ball. He picks up on when defenders fall asleep and then exploits that or pretends to go one way before exploding the other. In general, I think the sumo has the potential to be a pretty good driver. I will get into this more in depth in a little bit, but I have confidence in his solid first step. And theoretically, the sumo has the height and length to at least be a decent finisher at the basket. When you look at his numbers this year, they were not bad at all. Desumu took 171 shots at the rim, finishing a respectable 65% of them. If he is driving in a straight line, he has the speed to get by his defender and finish. I have seen some people worry about Desumu's athleticism, but I really do not think that he is slow or unathletic. I think some proof of that is in his free throws. Desumu went to the line once for every 3 shots he took, attempting 5 foul shots per game. Once he gets ahead of steam, it is not easy to stop him if you are lagging behind or late to react. In particular, this is why I like when the Sumu is quick to attack off the catch. He can get rolling rapidly and leave the defense with little time to react. The problem though, is the Sumu is not always attacking against a defense or defender that is lagging behind the play. Instead, a lot of the time, the Sumu is being met by bigs or help side defenders at the rim. In my opinion, this is where his biggest improvement area needs to come in order to have sustained success at the NBA level. Like I just said, I disagree with the notion that the Sumu is unathletic or slow. He has a strong, although not incredible, first step in my opinion. His main problem is his strength. The Sumu has to work really hard just to get to his spots, if he even gets there. I mentioned in my last video that Jared Butler lacked top tier burst, but that he could still get to the rim by bullying his opponents out of the way. For me, the opposite happens with the Sumu. He is fast enough to get to the basket, but once he gets there, he is knocked off balance far too easily. The Sumu cannot really gain position on his drives, so a lot of the time, he is having to take really tough, contested floater or runner type shots. He cannot leverage his athleticism into getting all the way to the rack, so he is forced to settle. I don't even think that the Sumu is afraid of contact, per se. He just genuinely cannot make too much progress on his drives. Part of me also wonders whether some of his flaws in this department come because Desumu does not always time his jumps correctly. 
To me, the untrained eye will admit, it seems like he can sometimes leave the floor too early. The sumo will have to improve on this in a big way going forward. The lanes to drive will be there for him in the NBA, but the help defense or rim protection will also be faster, longer, bigger, and better. However, there are some ways that the sumo can temporarily mask this flaw. Keep in mind that I said temporarily, because I think this is an imperative improvement that he needs to make. But the sumu can help his offense by continuing to make these types of little floaters. The sumu can get the step on his defender, but he cannot get all the way to the rim, so that leaves the in-between game for him, which I am fairly optimistic about. The sumu has soft touch, as well as good craft on his teardrop. He can stop and then shoot over his defender. Additionally, I think that the sumu is a capable playmaker. I will break down in a bit why I do not think that he is best suited to a primary ball handling role. However, the sumu can create for others in the pick and roll, and if he really grows in this area down the road, his upside is actually a lot higher. At 6 foot 5 with a 6 foot 8 wingspan, the sumu has really good size for a guard. He can see and pass over opposing defenses without getting harassed on the ball. One thing I like is that the sumu is able to go either way on the floor. At times, you will see him go right and then go back left before patiently finding the final pass. Lastly, the Sumu also showed some creativity as a passer in ball screens. Not only can he hit the roller, but he can also scan the floor and make quick decisions to hit shooters on the weak side. Even though he is not a spectacular or flashy passer, he plays with good poise and maturity that embodies a third year college player. Still, the Sumu is not the most natural playmaker. Even though he got over 5 assists per game in his last season at Illinois, I think part of that is because he was such a focal point of the team. The Sumu led Illinois in usage rate by some margin, and as a result, he was getting plenty of reps handling the ball. There's nothing wrong with that of course, because after all, he was their best player. However, that will not be the case in the NBA, definitely not right off the bat at least. The Sumu can still be a little shaky in pick and roll scenarios, he does not always appreciate the geometry of the court, and as a result, he is a little prone to committing some avoidable turnovers. For instance, the Sumu might misjudge how tight a window actually is, be a little bit off on the timing of his passes, or simply not take optimal care of the ball. The Sumu led his conference in turnovers at over 3 per game, and while this number is not worrying, it is also indicative that he is at his best with a natural point guard next to him in the backcourt. I prefer the Sumu a lot more as a secondary playmaker, where he plays more within the flow of the offense, does not force things as much, and does not have to deal with as much defensive attention. In this capacity, I think that the Sumu does not have to think as much, which ultimately benefits him. He can make passes along the baseline, either finding his bigs or kicking it out to the three-point line, as well as generally being quicker with his decision making. I also quite like when the Sumu brings the ball up the court. He is a very good defensive rebounder for a guard, who can grab and go before dishing the rock to his teammates. This is one area where I think he will impress right off the bat in the NBA. Because once the Sumu enters the league, he will definitely need to complement his game with at least some passing. I am still a little bit hesitant to fully buy into his shot, because I fully believe that he will need at least a little bit of tweaking after getting drafted. Like I mentioned earlier, most of the Sumu shots were 2 point jumpers, and while it looks great when he has it going, he only made an average 38% of these shots. More than that, I think that the Sumu does not have the easiest shot mechanics. There is a lot going on when he is pulling up, particularly in the lower body where his legs can sometimes kick out and sort of be all over the place. That, coupled with his shot profile, gives me some room to worry. I think that the Sumu is good enough to figure it out, but it might be a process at first, especially since he is very much a score first 2 guard. Another area of improvement for the Sumu is his 3 pointer. That might sound a little surprising given that the Sumu made nearly 39% of his 3 point shots in his junior season, but he shot trays at a pretty low volume and his previous 2 years were not great. In his freshman season, the Sumu shot an okay 35% from 3, but then regressed to a disappointing 30%. His percentage this year was evidently a lot better, but he took just 83 triples all season long, his lowest number in college. Still, some credit has to go to the Sumu. He got 20 points a night without having to light it up from beyond the arc. 
In the NBA though, there is a much greater emphasis on outside shooting, especially for guards. The Sumu will need to prove that he is respectable from the three-point line. Otherwise, his driving game, which already needs a lot of improvement, will be further hurt, and he will also have a negative impact on his team's spacing. Just being able to space the floor will be critical for the Sumu. Teams do not want someone who has to take a step or two inside the arc in order to shoot. Instead, he needs to be ready to catch and shoot the ball when he gets it, even if he might be able to somewhat conceal his uninspiring three-point shooting with smart cuts and pull-ups. For all I know, this might not even end up being an issue. Maybe the Sumu stays in the high 30s on higher volume, but right now, I am a little skeptic that that will be the case. His 3-point history is not overly encouraging, and the Sumu only averaged 75% from the free throw line in college. On defense, the Sumu will always have more potential than other guards, if only because of his size and length. Since he is big respective to his position, the Sumu has margin for error. As an individual defender though, he does not always need to be afforded this. I think that he plays with good effort, moving his feet, competing, and making himself tough to beat off the dribble. I like this possession here against Ohio State. The Sumu makes multiple efforts, cuts off the drive, and then contests the three-pointer after fighting over the screen. Or here, he slides his feet, stays in front of the attacker, and ultimately forces the travel to get the ball back for Illinois. The Sumu is also able to make plays on the defensive side of the basketball. He averaged over a steal per game during his career at Illinois, showing that he has decent anticipation instincts on this end of the floor. The Sumu plays with active hands. This means that he can either poke the ball away from the attacker or play in the passing lanes to get the ball back for Illinois. After that, he can get from one end of the court to the other to punch in points for his team. But while I like the Sumu's upside as an individual defender, I have to acknowledge that he still needs to make tons of strides off the ball. The Sumu can be late to react, such as here against Duke where he does not sink to guard the pick and roll. But all of the Sumu's awareness issues as an off-ball defender come to a head when it comes to navigating screens. I am quite worried about this facet of the Sumu's defensive game. He really struggled with this in the tape that I watched, and given that screens are a staple of most NBA offenses, he will need to improve a lot quickly. It seems to me like the Sumu has really poor technique when it comes to getting around screens. He almost never makes himself skinny or flexible. Instead, the Sumu gets caught on picks most of the time, putting his team in a bad position as a result. If you run the Sumu off screens, then it is almost a guarantee that you will find him trailing or lagging behind his man. He does not know how to avoid getting decked, almost to a baffling degree. Watch here as the Sumu gets caught behind his man and cannot get back into the play in time. Here, the Sumu does not get scored on per se, but he is lagging behind, cannot get in front to contest the pass, and Illinois eventually concedes the 3. However, the encouraging part is that it seems like this is purely a technique error mixed with some poor discipline, rather than a lack of effort which would be uncharacteristic of the Sumu. As he enters the NBA, I will certainly be keeping a close eye on this issue and seeing whether he has improved from college to the league. In my opinion, there is often quite a bit of lack of middle ground on Ayo Desumu. Some people see him as a surefire lottery pick, other people argue that he shouldn't even be a first round pick to begin with. For me, I'm somewhere in between. I think that he has all the tools to where I would understand if a team picked him in the top 14, 15, 16 of the draft, but at the same time, I don't think that he is guaranteed to be that good. That goes back to a number of reasons. First, his shot profile, I think that his two-pointer right now, he's a little bit too dependent on that while not being versatile enough with his three-pointer, and at the same time, he is not dynamic enough as a driver. He badly needs to improve in that regard, and part of that will be getting much stronger as part of an NBA conditioning program. But at the same time, if a team was to pick him that high because they believed in his work ethic, they believed that his jumper would eventually come around because I do think that he has soft touch, and they thought that he had some upside as a passer, which, to be honest, I agree with, then I could totally understand the Sumu being a lottery pick. But for me personally, I will probably end up having him around that top 20 to top 25 area of my big board, which, as we come nearer to the draft, will be out on my channel. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Ayo the Sumu, and if you enjoyed the video, if you enjoyed the channel, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. 
Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.